What's up folks, it's Dr. Ken and welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we have got to discuss the brain bus wheel system which can look so much complicated but I tell you what, there is only one way to eat an elephant and that is taking a bite at a time. So I haven't known so I've divided this video, this whole topic into several short videos that are easy to follow and for today we've got to, to initiate the discussion on the anterior circulation of the brain, anterior circulation of the brain. I got 10 minute ticking clock and without wasting time, um, let's get started. So this will be the first part of the discussion, I mean the discussion on the brain vascular system and before we start the discussing the you know the bright surprise and stuff and let's first recall the functional areas of the brain so we need because what we're doing what we want to do is to have the anatomical clinical anatomical correlation when we have um, you know transient or permanent disruption of the blood supply to the specific part of the brain so we need first to know these parts of the brain what are they you know associated with that are they associated with so we know right like, on um, <coughs> this is a sort of repetition we know like we will have the primary somatosensory area which is a broad money area number 31 and 2 and that is the you know the somatic sensation somatosensory and we know that like, we have broad money area number four here which is primary motor area which is around um, you know associated with movement and we know how they are you know um distributed all over you know the this so much in, in this cortex cortices this primary somatosensory and you know um uh, motor area so this is just a repetition because you want to remember and you remember that the face the face is more laterally is represented more laterally and that you're moving you know towards the lower parts of the body is you are moving towards the medial side of the of these cortices and so that's just a repetition and you remember remember that the broad money area is found in this part of the frontal lobe and then we know like if you have a disruption in the blood supply this part we can have the brocase aphasia and you know now what the brocase aphasia is and then we have this part here which is when case area uh, and it is associated, you know, with um, comprehension, comprehension. So we know, like, <coughs> we can have damage, you know, like disruption, by surprise, this part, and then the person can present with venicase aphasia, and you know what that is. And we have, we just discussed the, a few days ago, uh, you know, the the visual pathway and we saw like we have these are uh, the optic radiations we know that the optic radiations will have those that the fiber that are passing through the parietal rope and then we have the fibers that are passing through the temporal rope so you all know like what happens if you have damaged this part the upper upper parts and the lower parts they have like different clinical presentation but you can also have disruption in blood supply into these specific parts and so that they have also the clinical the different um different clinical presentation different clinical presentation and this is to say really remember the visual cortex you know sits in the banks of chiral and efficient we know where we have the upper bank the lower bank we know like we have the very posterior part which has different presentation from you know damage in the anterior part of the you know this or um, primary visual cortex so that was that was a bit about what we've discussed in the previous videos so now let's discuss about the blood supply of the brain the blood supply the blood supply of the brain can be divided into arterial blood supply and the venous drainage so arterial supply and the venous drainage we are not talking anything about the venous drainage in this right this whole block but because we have discussed it separate um you know uh as a separate part so today we are going to deal only with the arterial blood supply and you know this discussion this whole discussion and uh, for today we just talk about the very first part of the discussion so we can we can call this as a part one of the brain vascular system and so yeah so we talk only the first part of it 
So um, the blood supply of the brain, the arterial blood supply now, can be divided into two parts, into two parts, we call them saturation. So we can have anterior saturation or posterior saturation and posterior saturation. So you can have anterior saturation and posterior saturation. So the anterior saturation comes from the internal carotid artery and then posterior saturation comes from the vertebral arteries, the vertebral arteries. So don't worry about, we're going to discuss everything in details. And so don't worry about anything at this time. So I mean the vertebral arteries now will come as a separate topic, but today we initiate the discussion on the internal carotid artery. We are not talking everything about the internal carotid artery because it's also a broad and I got only 10 minute ticking clock. And so we are talking on the first part of this discussion. So um, <coughs> the, the, internal, the internal carotid artery, which now forms the anterior secretion as you've seen in the previous slide, it comes from the common carotid artery. So this is the common carotid artery on this side, and then this is common carotid artery on left side. But there's something that we need to know, like <coughs> the, the, the common carotid artery on the right side it comes from the brachial, um, cephal brachial cephalic trunk and and on the left side it is a, it is a direct branch of arc of outer so it's a branch direct from the arc of outer that goes on the left side from the left common carotid artery so the left common right common carotid artery comes from the brachiocephalic trunk and you can guess from the name we have the brachio which means arm and cephalus which means head so this one you go to supply the head uh, you know the arm the upper upper rib and and the cephalus the head on this side so that is it so you cannot forget that the right common carotid artery is the direct is a branch of brachiocephalic trunk but the left common carotid artery is the direct branch from the arc of outer is a direct branch of arc of outer that's it that's it so that we have seen we have seen how the common carotid artery comes from the you know um the brachios you know from the from the common common carotid arteries so let's see how the how the common carotid arteries bifurcate to form the two terminal branches because we have internal carotid so i'm sure we have um for sure we have the external carotid arteries so let's see how it you know bifurcate so at the superior at the border at around you know at around the level of c3 c4 at around the level of C3, C4, the common carotid artery will form two terminal branches and that will be the internal carotid artery and, or you already know that external carotid artery. So that's a, that's a, <coughs> these are the two terminal branches of the common carotid artery and they happen at the level of C3, C4. So at the level of C3, C4, the common carotid artery will bifurcate to form the two terminal branches, which is the external carotid artery and the internal carotid artery, external carotid and the internal carotid artery. So we, this is one way of remembering the level at which they bifurcate, but also another way we have this bifurcation, it's happening at the superior border of the, car, of the thyroid cartridge. So at the superior border of the thyroid cartridge is also you know it's another landmark you can use it to say like the bifurcation of the arc of outer occurs at the level of superior border of the thyroid cartridge and that is also corresponding that's also corresponding to um that also corresponds to you know the level of c3 and c4 the level of c3 and c4 so that's how we form these two terminal branches so I mean that is it from today's from this very first part of the discussion i've decided that i will divide this you know the whole topic into short videos that are easy to follow 10 minutes is just nothing so you can always always like um like you know have your time to watch all of these so whether you are on I mean on your way from hostel to the lecture hall, you can like watch all this part and it's easier for you. So don't forget to follow the next uh, discussion because we it's a, it's an ongoing thing and see you next time. See you soon.